evening and welcome to our crafting session this evening. My name is Jenny McCormack and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm based in the market town of Brackley in Northamptonshire which is in the UK. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're watching live please do say hi. It's lovely to know who's watching with us and if you have any questions as we go along, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. If you're watching on replay or catch up, whether that's on Facebook or whether that's on my YouTube channel, which is Jenny McCormack, that's how you can find me on there. Then if you have any questions or queries on what I've been creating and the products that I've been using, then again, just pop them in the comments section. And if it requires a particular response, obviously I will get back to you. I do try and respond to all um, comments anyway. I really do appreciate your comments. It does definitely help my um, standing on YouTube and on Facebook. So the more comments, the better. If you've been watching me, I know it's only Tuesday. <laughs> So if you were watching me yesterday or you've been at any of my coffee and card sessions, you'll see that we've been using this lovely stamp set. It's called Marvellous Nature. And as I discovered yesterday, you can spell marvellous with one or two L's. The traditional English spelling is two L's, but you can use it with one L when it's used specifically as an adjective. So there you go, didn't know that until yesterday. So there are two images that you can see there. One is a set of two swallows and the other one is this lovely fern. And yesterday I created this card here live. Let me just get this, this one out, this one here. And I used our new Moody Mauve colour for this, our new ink, and it's the same colour in the background. And these are the ones that I've made, either here or at um, Coffee and Card. So we've got again the birds, but this time I've got balmy blue and a crumb cake layer behind. These are all note cards. Here is the fern. And I had a go at doing an ombre effect, which is what we're going to do this evening. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can create an ombre effect with um, different inks. But also you can do the same actually with one ink pad. So I will show you how to do that. We've got this one here with the birds in Orchid Oasis. This one in wild wheat and then this one here which I haven't finished off is done in mossy meadow I think that looks particularly stunning I think a really dark green is really really well any dark color is really effective so let's get cracking with some ombre designs so there's quite a few different ways that you can create an ombre effect with an ink pad Obviously, we know that we can create ombre effects just as backgrounds using our blending brushes, for example. Hi, Diane. Hi, Jeanette. So if you are doing a background, you could use our blending brush for that. But this element is actually on the stamp itself. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can do this. I'm going to use our Stamparatus um, because it allows me to re-ink and reapply the stamp in the same place. So let's start with let's start with the birds. Let's turn this round. I'm trying to keep it out of the way of the of the camera because I managed to um, catch it yesterday. I hope you're well, Jeanette. So let's put my piece of card down. So I've cut some card. And I've actually made this bigger than the other um, pieces I was using, so I'm hoping this is going to work. Um, so I'm just going to put this piece of card down. 
with a magnet on the side and then I'm going to pop this now I guess actually you could it's a bit tight on the piece that I've cut but theoretically you could if this was your um, card your white card you could stamp that here and have a bigger message on the right hand side there's no reason to have it um, with the card in portrait if you don't want to so let's pop this down I'm hoping this is clean from from this morning it should be so I'm just going to position this a little way up and I've moved it away from the edge just to give me a lot of a um, little bit more ability to add pressure oh good I'm glad you're well thank you for um, catching up on the replays I noticed that you'd commented so thank you for that so one way to do an ombre effect is to use different colours of inks from light through to dark and just bring those out of that. So here I've got Petal Pink, Flirty Flamingo and Calypso Coral. And I felt that these made quite a nice sunset look. So one way that you can do this is to ink up firstly with the light ink and then gradually add elements in the darker inks. So let me get that started. I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to ink this one up first. So this is petal pink. and stamp this down now for this this particular technique you really do need to use a stamparatus or stamp positioning tool of some kind because it will make your life a lot easier okay so i've got a little bit of definition missing here on the top right hand side which means the top left on my stamp always gets very confusing <laughs> So I just want to add a little bit more there. Okay, that is fine. So there is my um, petal pink. Now what I'm going to do is introduce Flirty Flamingo, which is my next colour up. And I'm going to grab some grid paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it light going to dark. I mean, it doesn't matter which way I do it, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up, let's get this the right way around, the very bottom bit, like so. And then I'm going to re-ink my stamp with a darker colour. And then I'm going to cover another little bit and then re-ink it. So this is Flirty Flamingo. So this is just one of the ways that you can do it. Um, what I could also do is I could mask at the same time. I could mask off. That's an old piece, isn't it? Um, at the top, like so. You don't have to do it this way, but it it might just give a slightly better definition. I don't know. We'll try it and see. So this is Flirty Flamingo that I'm adding to my stamp and I appreciate that the I'm inking it up out of your view so I do apologise for that. Okay. So this is Flirty Flamingo. So this is my next colour up. So a good amount of pressure. Like so. And now I can lift that one away and I'm going to put a darker one on again so I can just peel this back so you can see that effect. Okay. And now I can cover this little bit up if I'm careful. And I'm not overlapping it, so I am overlapping this but leaving a little bit of a gap so that the colours merge in together. 
and I'm going to use my darkest colour, Calypso Coral, for this one. Now you don't need to actually re-ink the whole stamp, oops, the whole stamp, just throw the ink pad over the apparatus. I'm going to mop that up because, there we go, it will go everywhere and I think I've got a tiny little hair on there but we'll see, might be okay. So this is my third impression with my darkest colour, like so. And now if I pull this one away and this one away, you can see that ombre effect. Now, I've got a little bit of a gap here, so there's a couple of things I can do. One is I could use a blending brush to blend that slightly. Let's see if I've got one. Probably haven't got one in the right colour. I've got a yellow. Let's just see. No, it's not. Um, it's not wet enough to do that. Let's just try it with this. Just on the very tip. So that's one way you could do it. So it is blending in, but I've only got a little bit to play with. The other thing is to put your mask back over, like so, and then just ink up that little bit again. There so good evening to anybody who's joined us since the start so we're doing a little bit of ombre work with this fabulous stamp set and it's just over this the body here that I want it okay so I'm just going to apply pressure that middle bit. There we go. Okay, so I've got it going from light to dark through that panel. So this is using three different ink pads, a light, a medium and a dark if you like. And because I was going from light to dark, you don't have to clean the stamp in between. If you were going dark to light, then I, I would definitely clean the stamp in between. Okay, so that's one way of creating that effect. Let me just lift this up. And I can add a sentiment onto this, I'll see in a minute. So there we go, I hope you can see that in detail. Hi Brenda! I hope you are keeping well. So there is one and I want to show you another way which I haven't tried so this one is um, just in my head which could be a little dangerous. Let me grab, I need a piece of white, what have I done with my other piece of white? Bear with me one second. I just cut another one ready. Because it occurred to me this would be a good way if you haven't got um, a range of ink pads. give this a go. So this one is three ink pads so I stamped it all over with petal pink then I added flirty flamingo mastered of and then I added, added calypso coral. Hi Brenda I do hope you are keeping well. 
so let's swap colours now and see if we can get a different effect with one um, ink pad. Mm. So let's go for Starry Sky, this one here. Let's me just position my, I think I had it here. Yeah, that's good enough. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to, what I want to do is mask it. Stamp it onto the mask twice and then stamp it onto here. So let's give it a go. So this is an ombre effect, hopefully, where you've only got one ink pad. So this is Starry Sky, so that really deep blue. And I do apologise that I'm off the screen for inking that, but... Hopefully it's you'll see the effect, that's the main thing. That's assuming it works. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to stamp it once, like so. Stamp it again. And then take my mask away and stamp it a third time. Okay, so because there's less ink, there's a lot less definition, but let's stick with it. So this time I'm going to ink it up again. And it may be one of these things that depends on the ink pad you're using. Let's see, anyway. So now what I'm going to do is mask it off altogether once. Like so. And then just apply the mask here. So I want that bit. Like so. And the place I'm choosing is is random, really. There's not a um, there's not a particular rhyme or reason. So this is stamped and stamped off once. This one. Okay. And then this one here. I'm going to ink up and stamp strength. Now it may be that this doesn't work because the stamp itself is a solid stamp. So there's a lot of contact with the paper. But we'll see. If it doesn't work I can just ink over it with the dark colour. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. I think this would definitely work with a normal stamp that is not a, a solid stamp, if you know what I mean. Okay. So, can you see, I've got the effect, but I've lost the definition in the stamped image. So, it, it did sort of work, but it's the wrong type of stamp to do it with. Hey ho, so I've learned lesson. I've learned something today, so what I'm actually going to do is just ink up the whole thing now. And stamp over it. Because I'm not happy with that, with the lack of definition at the bottom. But it was worth a try. So if you give this a go with a non-solid stamp, do let me know. I'm trying to think what stamp it would work with particularly. Okay, so 
So there is a little bit of an ombre in there. Okay, so there's that one. So I will add some sentiments and finish these off in a second. So there's that one. This is the one where it's obviously more ombre and I wanted it to make it look like it was a, a sunset effect. And now let's do two different colours and I'm going to swap stamps as well. Makes a good noise doesn't it against that whole solid stamp. So I'm going to swap this one out and use this one here, this lovely fern. And I'm going to recreate this effectively, but I'm going to use two colours. So I'm going to use the wild wheat. Oh, my grid paper here is sticky. Yes, wild wheat and mossy meadow together. Yes, they're called sticky sheets and they basically mean you can use these without um, without a magnet because your card sticks to it wherever you put it. So when you pick it up, it sticks to this. It's really useful if you're doing a large area and you haven't really got any space for a magnet. Okay, let's have a go with this one here. Um, let me see, I'm going to cut this piece to size. I'll find my spare pieces in a minute. Um, and sadly, the sticky sheets are not a uh, stamping up item. But if anybody's interested, I can um, tell you where they come from. find that piece now aren't I? Right so our third one yeah here it is of course so I've got well actually I've got crumb cake here but there we go um, so I'm going to do these two layers and my white card and so I'm just going to put this down I'll just use this as a marker like so make sure my stamp is clean before I start and pop this here so this is probably my favourite of the two I mean I do love birds if you follow me for a while you know that I do love bird images but I just think this is really really beautiful okay so I've got Wild Wheat and Mossy Meadow. Wild Wheat is one of our new colours. Mossy Meadow has been around a little while. And I'm thinking, what am I thinking? Mossy Meadow at the top and Wild, um, no, Mossy Meadow at the bottom and Wild Wheat at the top. So you could either mask off the stamp or you could mask off your finished paper. Yeah, Jeanette likes the fern as well. There we go. So, what I'm going to do is, what I should have done is stamp it first, but let's tear this like so. And I'm just going to see where this is going to fall. And I deliberately tore my paper. Now, which was I going to have? <laughs> that was going to be the bottom. Let's smooth this up a little bit, like so. Okay, let's give this a go. 
So this is going to be two, a two colour image. Like so. There we go. So that's the bottom section. And then what I'm going to do is just mask it off. So I do want a little bit of an overlap. So masking that little bit off. I'm going to clean the stamp. And then add the wild wheat. And you could use a post-it note. I'm just using some grid paper. And um, because this sticky sheet underneath is sticky, it holds that perfectly. So it doesn't have to be a post-it note. And I'm inking up the whole stamp. So that I'm not worrying about there being a little bit missing. But... This ink pad is quite juicy, so I'm just going to move this out slightly. So I released the details of our class in a box. Um, they went out by email early this morning. So thanks to everybody who's booked already. It always gives me a, um, a head start when I have people that book promptly. And also when it comes to sending out the kits, wherever possible, I send them out in order that they were booked. So the earlier you book, the quicker you get it. doesn't always work like that, of course, but I do try. Hi, cat. Right, let's see. So I've inked up. wild wheat and I've got a little bit of an overlap between the two hopefully there'll be enough I hope you're well capped and that you've had a good day so far okay so I'm going to keep my hand on this in case I want to re-ink that but there's the there's the effect so if I felt I wanted this bit darker, because I've still got this piece here, I could put this back over and re-ink. So I might do that just to get it really um, defined. But I'm happy with the wild wheat at the top. So I could be asking for trouble, couldn't I, doing this? But nothing ventured, nothing gained. So... Just putting that back in place and it's really good with the circle because you can see where it needs to go roughly so let's just do that mossy meadow again I should have done it darker to start with but never mind so I put my mask back in place and I'm re-inking my stamp and I know that I don't need to re-ink the whole thing so you could just re-ink half but on the basis that I'm bound to have got it wrong I've re-inked re the whole stamp okay let's give this a go so this is our two-tone stamp that's better right now when i lift that away there we go we've got one blending into the other so that's wild wheat and mossy meadow okay let's pop that down let's wipe this And just put these cards together. So this one here, I'm going to use Mossy Meadow for my sentiment, I think. 
and there is a nice sentiment that says lots of love and I think I'm just going to use that for all of them but I'll see you could use anything going so this is our stamp set of the week so if you buy the stamp set of the week the week that I'm demonstrating it then you will get sent all of the blank elements so the front layers the cardstock to make the cards that I've demonstrated obviously you may or may not have the same inks but I'm sure you can improvise so here's my lots of love I'm going to put this over on the right hand side I'm sorry if there's a bit of a shadow so there's one Here's my ombre birds. And you could also use sponge daubers on the stamp to build up the colour. That's another ombre variation. So if it was this one here, I would add the lightest one and then add the next one and then add the next one and stamp it in one go. So here is Calypso Coral and I'm just picking out the darkest colour for all of them. I do like to use a darker colour for the sentiment, especially if it's quite a skinny sentiment like these ones are. And then finally, I've got the blue here, Orchid Oasis. I don't know if those are in your view or not, hopefully they are. So if anybody hasn't seen the video with the projects, I'll happily pop those up for you as soon as I've finished here. But if you've seen them, that's absolutely fine. And I like the way that that fits around the tail of the bird. Okay, let's just mount those up really quickly. So I've got this one here. I've actually got crumb cake and mossy meadow. I could switch that out for wild wheat, but for some reason I got it in crumb cake. So we'll go with that. sure how much ink I've got on this one I might use my seal here and these are just going to go on to white base cards okay. and I really must change my background here so just centralizing that ladies did some great cards today there we go so for a change I've got two layers on that one onto a white card but you could pop it onto crumb cake if you want and then I'll add a little bit of bling there we go so there's that one there try not get any dirty ink marks from my hands on there and let's do this ombre one because I've got some layers ready for that one as well So this one will just go on to the Calypso Coral and that there. So although I was concentrating on the ombre effect, you can stamp these out very speedily if you're using one colour or even two colours to be honest. Obviously the something in three times 
does make a difference to the time that it takes. There we go. Hello, Scylla. I hope you're recuperating well. Thank you for booking class. And hi to D. Okay, so I've got two different ombre effects. Well, this is a two tone, two different colours. This is three different colours. Let's add a little bit of bling. And the nice thing about using the lots of love sentiment is that you could put anything inside. So it could be happy birthday, it could be thinking of you, it could be, this would make a nice sympathy card. Um, but it could be birthday, it could be a thank you. So using lots of love on the outside gives you lots of options for the inner. Oh, well done, Scylla. And what was I going to do? Oh yes, yeah, some bling. <laughs> Okay, so for my ombre, I've got these ones here. So these are sadly recently retired because it's got pale papaya on it. But it does work particularly well with this combination of colours. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to put a light one at the top as a contrast. And then... Darker one here, and then a middle sized or smaller darker one here. Have to think about that. There we go. So that's our first ombre card with the swallows, and then this one here is going to use some gold bling like I had here. Uh, just see if I can find it and then we're all done so that's gold sequins let me just see if I have some more here and if not oh, I could use that oh I tell you what I could use I've actually got some wild wheat but while I'm there, I've got some gold sequins, so I'm going to use those. Let's just pop these out of the packet. Fingers for sequins, they do tend to come unattached very easily. So with this one here, I'm just going to pick up these gold sequins and have one... Thank you, Jeanette. Look after yourself. And three, like so. There we go. So those are finished cards. I won't finish off. I'll. Oh, well, I will finish this one off, but I haven't got anything else prepared in terms of layers, so I will leave that one. So this was the one where I used one ink pad. Um, to do an ombre effect but it didn't work as well as I'd hoped because the ink the stamp is solid so when you stamp it off it takes off a lot of the ink <laughs> so it didn't quite work to plan but there we go so there we are hope you like my two finished cards and I shall be back tomorrow Wednesday morning for another in our series and I think we might have to have some heat embossing I um, haven't done heat embossing for ages so I think I might take some dark card now I don't think I've got any gold embossing powder so it's going to be probably silver but I'll see what I've got to hand so thank you so much have a great evening gone on a bit longer than I intended but I have at least made two cards um, I hope you like the designs. I hope you have a great morning, afternoon or evening, depending on when and where you're watching. And I look forward to crafting again tomorrow morning. I do hope you're able to join me. That's 10am UK time. And 
in the meantime keep profiting thank you so much everyone do take care bye for now